the customers complained of an engine malfunction light. Let's just confirm the customer's concern. What have we got? Nothing. So it looks like I'm gonna to have to run this vehicle to induce the concern, so we'll start this up. Now we've got engine malfunction. We'll get gel test from Eclipse plugged in and we'll see what goes on. Oh, the voltage is looking great. Right. As always, auto VIN identification. Truck is a Euro 6 MX11. From here, we can then go into our engine, which is PCI, which is Packard Common Rail Injection, and then we'll scan for faults from here. Now we're in our engine ECU, we can go to fault code reading, read the fault codes, and we'll see what we're dealing with. So it was in engine protection, and it's got a magnetic valve unit pump, current too low or open circuit. So this is our fault code here, P0201, which is a magnetic valve unit pump. The fault is current too low or open circuit. This could be an electrical connector or wiring, and this is something we're gonna test now on the vehicle. Just to give you a bit of information about this, there's two unit pumps fitted to these engines, and they both run at 50% capacity. You've got uh, L092 and L093. This is your unit pump. This is where they're located. These are our resistance measurements, which we'll be checking now between the unit pump and the engine ECU. This is our tightening torque if we end up changing the injector because you'll need to replace the clamp bolts. So we'll get into the wiring diagram and see exactly where we need to test this on the engine ECU. So we'll jump into diagrams now. We don't need model specific wiring diagrams for this because there's no joins between the injector and the engine ECU. It's on the same harness so we'll just use our generic diagrams and we'll search for the injector or unit pump I should say. So if we put CL092 in, this is our unit pump. So CL093 is one unit pump, and the other one is CL092. Now, 92 is the one closest to the front of the engine, and 93 is the one closest to the rear of the engine. So we'll be looking for connector A. Uh, CD420 is our engine ECU, as you can see here. This diagram gives us our plugs from where we're going to be looking for this so a will be this top one here obviously this is our location information here and stuff so we know plug a which is here is the top plug on the ecu and we'll be looking for pins 25 and 26 and we can take plug a off and test for resistance at pins 25 and 26 and that resistance value should be 0 0.67 ohms so we'll get this cab over now and get plug A off and test the resistance. Not the most accessible of the units, but these are the two we need to look at. Hopefully we can get in there. So this wiring harness comes along here to the back of the block, all the way along the back of the block, down to here, and we've got A, B, and C. So we'll pull plug A off now, and test pins 25 and 26. So I've just pulled off plug A here, and we're looking for pins 25 and 26. So down each side of the plug on there is numbers. And we'll be looking for 25 and 26. So 25 and 26 is there. But we certainly won't be shoving these in there. We'll be using one of these test leads. So which size do we need? Let's have a look. Do they fit? Perfect. So, as always, these are available on the website if you want them at chucktechuk.com. So slap them in there, red and black, 
and then we can put our test leads in the other end here and check the resistance. So we'll set this to ohms. What have we got? Let's slap them in there. 287.9 kilo ohms. We need a unit pump. Lovely. So what we've got here is our new unit pump. What I'll do is I'll plug this into the plug from the wiring harness here and then we'll test the resistance at the engine ECU and we can see if it matches the factory specification. So let's get this plugged in and see how we get on. All right, so that's plugged in now, completing the circuit and we've got 0 0.9 ohms. And JAL test says 0 0.67 at 20 degrees and 0 0.94 ohms at 120 degrees. Well, it's somewhere near, isn't it? It's certainly better than the kilo ohms reading we were having before. So I'd say this is going to be a fix. So we'll get this put on the engine now. Let's get this stripped off here. All right, let's get this unplugged. If we can unplug it, there we go. And we'll strip all this crap off here to get to this unit pump. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but this one's painted gray and that one's white. So it's already had a unit pump at some point. So I think we're just sort of carrying on the succession of replacement here and it would have had two unit pumps in its lifetime. I'm kind of done with this now for now. So we'll shift this out of the way. So I'm just going to drain down this fuel filter housing now off the lift pump on this bottom pipe here because the last thing we want is the fuel going from the fuel filter housing draining into the sump through the hole in the fuel gallery where the fuel unit pump is. So I'll whip this pipe off here now, drain this out and we'll crack on with the job. So we'll get this fuel return pipe off now, hopefully. I don't know why I've brought a 14 to a 17 mil spanner fight. There we go. So that's our wiring harness loose, our uh, fuel return pipe, and this stupid bracket that always gets in the way of everything I ever want to do. We'll fish this out of here and we can get to the unit pump. This should give us enough room now to get to this. So we'll crack this pipe here, crack this pipe there, undo them two bolts and get hit in the face with the unit pump. So that's our fuel pipe loose now. Oh my God, look at the corrosion on that. Anyway. We'll just undo these bolts now slightly. Hopefully it'll pop up off the cam that's in the block, but we might have to put a heel bar under it and just pry it up slightly, but let's have a go with it. So, we'll turn these off out slightly. Right, so it hasn't moved. We'll have to get the heel bar in here, hopefully, and pop it up a touch. So, heel bar's in here now. Hopefully, this will just pop up. There we go. So, all that tension's on them bolts now. This one specifically. And we'll wind it out. There you go, no one was injured. We'll slap our new one in here now. There we go, right, two new bolts. So we'll put our two new bolts in here because they are used once only. No doubt these have a typical DAF value of something plus 90 degrees. So we'll just nip these down. So 
the setting on dial test for these two bolts is 30 newton meters plus 60 so that's what we'll attempt to do this to now with this massive extension and i don't know why i've just done this but hey ho right 30 newton meters we want to see that's 30 Let's send this other one in that's 30 right let's set this to angle which is this one 60 degrees so Sixty. That's sixty on that one. Right, so they've been talked up now to the correct values. Let's build this back up. Every time, every day, every time, on every job. Let's get this plate back on here now. Get on there, you big bag of junk. And of course, Daft put this in the way, so I can't even use this on there. I need to find my ratchet. If only I had a ratchet. I did have a ratchet. There it is. Last but not least, our stupid clip. If I can get it in there. There we go. Done. So we'll plug these in now and we'll see if the truck starts. That would be nice, wouldn't it? So we'll just prime the fuel filter housing now and then we'll go and start the truck. That's really tight now. Let's hope it starts. So what we'll do now is we'll jump into PCI and just clear these fault codes before we go and start the truck. I just recycled the ignition, so we'll turn this back on. And I shouldn't have any faults in the engine issue now. So there's no faults in there. Right, let's go start this up. So if this starts now, that fault shouldn't come up on the dash and it should be inactive on gel test. So we'll just check it for leaks, now it's running. Obviously, I don't want to see anything round here or on the fuel rail where I've had the pipes off. And we can also go back into gel test now and check the fault codes to see if any have come back on. As you can see, the ECU has no fault code stored in the memory. So this is a successful fix. I'll get the cab down now. I'll just brake cleaner that off and the customer can have the truck back. come out of this now home yes I want to save it save right let's go check the dash turn this truck off oh look at that beautiful happy days right time for home I've had enough oh almost forgot do you know I had to go back to Manchester for this the other week that was annoying, a two hour round trip for the fucking VCI.